Proverbs. We'll keep on wanting to say some. Proverbs chapter number four, verse fourteen. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Now we're picking up back where we were in Proverbs chapter one. We're warning about sinners in verse ten. It's a repetition. It's a verily, verily. It's telling God telling, Solomon telling. It's important. The tabernacle is important because it's described over and over. The birth of Jesus Christ, the date, is not important. Because we're not even told. Each of the stories that are repeated, at least among two of the Gospels, is important. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is in all four of the Gospels. It's important. It's even mentioned in the book of Acts. So when we see Solomon writing twice to his son, writing down, recording God to us, to the Holy Spirit in our Bible, to refrain from sinners, to refrain from the wicked and evil men. Got a note here, Matthew 7, 15. But we go back to, to Proverbs 1, 10. It says, avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. And pass away. Don't even look. In chapter 1, he said, they're going to come to you and going to say, come, come with us. This warning is, don't even look. They're not going to ask you. But you're, you're not even to walk by this path. There are things in this world that are associated with wicked and evil people. You're not to, listen, politics is one of those things that a Christian does not belong in. Selling used cars. Now listen, you can be a born again Bible believing Christian and sell cars proper and right and under prayer, but there's still that, that tendency of, you know what, a used car salesman is not really a good business. You know, he'll do anything to sell a car. And that one car that you don't know about that has problems. There are places you are to avoid as a Christian. Anything associated with liquor and smoking and drugs. Well, I want to witness to the druggies and stuff like that. You go somewhere else where they are. Don't go where they are. Go where they go. He said, what are you talking about? You don't have to go where they sell drugs, but there are places where they have to go to do their business. You remember when we talked about the, the, the wisdom, the, the street preacher, she cries in the chief places of Concord. And if you remember, Concord is where business is being done. It is where traffic is. Listen, a druggie selling drugs is not where the, where the traffic is. But eventually, he's got to go down one of the main roads that you can be with your gospel tracks. You don't have to walk into a bar room to witness to a drunk. Hold the sign outside on the public sidewalk, not on Walmart's property. I guarantee you will reach that guy. I mean, if you want to reach the world, you want to reach everybody in your neighborhood standing outside Walmart's property on the public sidewalk with a with a sign about for Jesus Christ will get you probably to reach many if not most of the people in your city. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. And if you are a sinner, and you have been involved with those kind of sins, don't even think, oh, I can go there, it's okay. No, you'll fall. 
Satan paints the path good. He makes it look nice and great. Aren't those billboards just pretty? Aren't those ads on TV just so, oh, you just want to go and get it? Isn't the music, be, the, the right music behind the, the advertisement and the right words and the catchy jingles that you remember for 45,000 years later? Isn't it? I can remember how to spell relief, R-O-L-A-I-D-S, but I can't remember all David's wife. How come? For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. So if they haven't done wrong, they're not going to sleep. They're going to have trouble sleeping. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. They enjoy hurting others. Romans 1.32. I have a note on that one. It bothers them that they have put their head on their pillow and they haven't done anybody any injustice today. And there's another place in the Bible that says, Woe unto them that, that devise wicked, wicked things upon their bed and then get up and is able to practice it. There are people today, right now, who are thinking about how to destroy the taxpayer, how to destroy the middle class worker, how to, how to, how to destroy the middle class family. If the Antichrist is living today, if, I don't know, if the Antichrist is living today, or whenever he does begin to live and, he, and he's going through his age, he is going to, to dream and think of ways of destroying the Jew. Who thought of all the torture devices for the Jews and the Polish during World War II? Somebody had to think of that. And it may not just be one man. Hey, you know, I got an idea last night. What was it? We strip off the skin of these Jews. We can make lampshades out of them. Hey, I got an idea. Well, you know, think of all the stuff we can do with their teeth. Hey, guys, check this out. You know, you know what the captain said? He says, if we build these big places and put them all in there, we can smoke them to death. Somebody had to think about that. Bombs and guns and ammunition came from man, not God. Cain was the first one to develop an instrument to kill. And there are people you need to realize they're, they're not all lovely people out there in the world. If you can know their heart like God knows their heart. We are in a day and age that there, there are people out there who want to discredit and dishonor and, and have sexual relations with children and don't even bat an eye. We have a correctional institute that's in this country that... We put bad men in there, and they come out worse. And they don't even bat an eye. I mean, if you want to turn from a wicked, evil man, don't go to jail. Chances are you will come out worse than what you were. Reality. For they eat the bread of wickedness. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. <laughs> what is opposed to the bread of life? The bread of wickedness. It's their food. They eat wickedness. Like prophets like Jeremiah and I think Ezekiel were told to eat the word. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is complete opposite. 
Their diet is wickedness and they enjoy it. They drink the wine of violence. As much as the desire to eat and drink, wickedness is their merriness. You know, there's a saying, you are what you eat. You can eat, and this is not physical food. What your eyes see, what your nose smells, what your mouth tastes, and what your ears hear. These people are not reading the Bible. They are not reading a math book or a history book. They are prone and into wickedness. Jesus said, what goes through the eye? What it comes out of the heart. But the path of the just. Okay. That's not the evil, the wicked man we've just been talking about. His path is as a shining light. It could be seen. It's bright. It's made known. That shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Second Peter one nineteen. Solomon proclaims to the Christian every day. Every hour you are to grow lighter and lighter and lighter and get off the filthy, the filthy, the darkness. How's that? You ought to give up drinking and the feast on the on the water of the word, the milk of the word. You ought to give up smoking and inhale the incense of prayer. You are to stop stealing and put your hands to labor. You are to put your eyeball from darkness into light. And grow. And if your light is not lighter and lighter and lighter as you go down, you are in spiritual retardness. And it's not God's fault. Hanging out with evil and wicked men will put your light out. And it will say what kind of character you are. You've got to want to be holy. God ain't going to make you. You get that out of your mind right now. you got to want. Then God will do. And God will give you light. If you receive that light, he'll give you more light. If you receive that light, he'll give you more. Listen, God will turn off the light when you don't want no more. You refuse, you rebel, you stop. The way of the wicked is as darkness, John chapter 3. They know not at what they stumble. Chapter 3, verse 23. There are people... And this is a sad thought, even more so after this weekend. There are people that, that Jesus is going to say to them, Depart from me, ye cursed, and an everlasting fire made for the Satan and his angel. They're going to say, Lord, didn't I pass out watchtower for you? Lord, didn't I ride my bike for you? Lord, didn't I eat you? Lord, didn't my, my cousin of my third generation, didn't he burn candles for you, for me? Lord, didn't I give all this money for the name of Christianity? Depart from me. I never knew you. There are people right now that are out in darkness and wickedness, and they don't even realize they are on the path of hell. And there are people today who are in hell today, and they still don't understand why they are there. 
I thought I was doing right. I thought I was being a Christian. What's that big church call themselves? What does the media call them? They call them Christian. When they enter into the gates of hell, whoa. And there's a possibility they may not know, and I don't know, but there's a possibility they may not know why they are in hell to Revelation 20, the great white throne judgment. That's why when I am on the streets, I make sure somewhere in my messages over and over that you go to hell because you rejected Jesus Christ. That is why. Not because I've been anathema by somebody. Not because I, I didn't join their organization. But by Jesus Christ. It says they stumble. You take someone who, who's, who's in a bed. And they're about to die. And they're about to die without Jesus Christ. They fight. I am told. I've never witnessed it. I'm told they fight. And then boom. The eyes are closed and they're in to hell. Now I have seen the eyes of Christians. And it's poof. They're gone. They're gone home. The only way I can describe it as a rest. That's why we're told to go to you and all the world and preach the gospel. Because they don't know. My son again. Solomon writing to uh, Rehoboam and uh, God writing to us, I say. I say. And when I say you don't have to, you don't have to believe it. Attend to my words. Now, what if that was God speaking? <laughs> Attend unto his words. <laughs> ain't going to do you no good if you ain't got God's words. Incline, go up, thy ear unto my saints. God's up there. Hey guys, what? What do you think? You don't do this. I got blah, 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 blah. You don't do that. And for Solomon with his son, maybe his son is at the he's a young tender age and he's gotta look up to dad. Dad, what'd you say? That means he's starting off early with his son. You know, you gotta start off children early. When that baby's in that womb, you got to put some speakers up to her belly and Christian music. Mama's got to read with her eyes, with her thoughts, the Bible. Not romance and novels and, and soap digest and all that other stuff. She's got to read the Bible because it's going into her heart, which is, which is flowing the blood that's going through that baby. And according to John the Baptist's mother, and according to Samson's mother, you got to get rid of the, 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 the alcohol. And she was alcohol, the drugs, and the tobacco. Now, if you step one thing closer, there's something about everything related to the vine tree that. Let them. Not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. See, Jesus said, Out of the heart come adulteries, murders, and Well, as you get those adulteries and murders out, put the word of God in. Why do they tell you if you want to quit cigarettes, you, you, you put candy? You try to get something in the replacement of smoking. 
Oh, quit drinking. Put more prayer instead of drinking. Put more Bible reading instead of smoking. Seek the Lord more instead of pornography. Instead of looking at pornography on the internet, look up things in the Bible, like Bible mountain names, Bible city names, Bible name. But look at that. Focus your eyeballs on that instead of nakedness. See, in order to quit, you've got to put something in replace of what you're going to quit. You can't just say, I'm going to quit and not fill that void. Fill it with the Lord. For they are life unto that are, they are life unto those that find them. Solomon's really stretching out there, isn't he? As as a as a earthly human father, my words are life. I'm going to tell you something that's not practiced today. You can rest my mother, but she 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 would correct me on this. Even in a parking lot of, of a shopping center, if I didn't look both ways before I crossed the road, I was going to get home and I was going to get a licking. And my mother would tell me each and every time, I don't want to visit you in a hospital. You teach your children. If it's got a skull and two bones as an X, you don't eat it or drink it. That's life. You tell your children, alcohol causes liver dysfunctions. Alcohol causes cancer. Alcohol will take your money. Alcohol will ruin your family. And alcohol is a waste of money. That's life. As far as our budget, we are living right there flat line. With a little boom 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 boom. But none of our money is wasted on any of that, any of that sinful pleasures. If we were to die today or the rapture would happen, you would just find just enough money and we, we are pleased as a family. Yes, we go out and eat. Yes, we, we, we buy things and, and enjoy them. But what I buy does not destroy my family. What my wife gets doesn't destroy the family. There are times when my wife will buy something for the children. For their pleasure. Clothes are bought for modesty, not for showing off. Solomon has a big mouth here for, for life in his words. What about if it was God? God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt live. Thou shalt have eternal life. You reject what God tells you to do, you're going to perish. You're going to spoil. You're going to hell. Keep thy heart. Uh, with verse 22, I have Exodus 15, 26. Like I said, you can check these, these references yourself. Now keep thy heart. Matthew 15, 18 is where Jesus says, I, I believe it is, out of the heart, murders, adulteries, and all that. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is, is wicked and indeed deceitful. Keep thy heart with all diligence, proper living, searching, seeking, for out of it are the issues of life. Out of it is the issue of life. What did Jesus say? What did Jeremiah say? That cuss, where did it come from? It came from your heart. It was there. Saying something bad about somebody. Where did that come from? That was in your heart where it came from
put away from thee a forward mouth. That was a wicked, perverse, unyielding mouth to God. And perverse lips put far from thee. That's great advice. There are plenty of perverse lips out there. Let that man, they're in the music. So turn off the radio. Well, I listen to it. Listen to the lyrics and you'll find out it's perverse. I got to listen to music every night in my job. And I listen to the lyrics like, wow, that's perverse. Perverse is, oh, 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 you're not talking about a body part. No, it's when you hear a song come on the radio, and, oh, baby, please don't be upset with me, but I got two lovers now, and you've always, and he knows that, you know, he can't attain me, but uh, I'm just a fool. That's perverse. Lips. Singing into a microphone, making money. And put into children's ears in a, in a store. It's disgusting. Let thy eyes look right on. That was a expression when I grew up. Right on. Here it is in the Bible. Right on, babe. Right on. They didn't even know it was in the King James Bible. They're quoting the Bible. Imagine somebody come up to you. Oh, the Bible's written by men. Right on. That's crazy. We heard that over and over and over. I don't even know what it meant, but right on. There it is. And let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Titus 2.13 says, Look into the blessed hope and the glorious fear of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It says straight before thee. You know, if you look at the stock market, it's like... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't even want to know what, what scientists say happens to your eyes when you're watching television. By the way, what goes through your eyes goes into your soul, you know. Eyes and ears go into that. Listen, I got pictures right now I could draw up as a child. I haven't been there in how many years? I already said with the ears and these, these stupid lyrics, these stupid songs that come up. I can still picture Mikey from the Life of Serial commercial. Like, come on. And I can't even remember someone's name at church. Guy introduced himself last night. We had a good conversation. I don't even remember what his name was. I can remember some stupid jingle. I, I you know, today it says, it says McDonald's billion serve. I'm so old. I remember when it was one serve. Well, maybe not one ten. Let thy eyes look right on, and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet. You looking where you're going? You can't look if you're in wickedness, because it says they're in darkness. Look at verse nineteen. The way of the wicked is as darkness and they know not at what they stumble. It says we're to get brighter and brighter. No one read it. Eighteen. The path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more into the perfect day. How can you ponder your, your feet if you, you can't see what you're going because you're living in wickedness? The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Let all thy ways be established by God. Let it be God to prove it. You better ask God to seek God. Listen, I have made plenty of mistakes in my life where I thought God was involved. I didn't even ask God. And it cost money. I just made a $69 mistake. Whoever thought I would need to pray about that? Now I got to pay $69 because it was the wrong one. See, when you don't look where you're going, and you don't seek God, it'll cost you. This case, it was money. Not to tighten the buckle a bit for a little while, but what if your ways cost you a life? What if you had one too many and you step out of that, that bar and you get into your car and you kill someone's child? I pray when I go to work at night, and I'm not going to it's a fact, but I don't want to be there. I pray because for the Lord to give me eyes to see people crossing the road. It's hard for us to see some people, especially when they're wearing dark clothes. Because I don't know, what, even if I hit someone accidentally, and if I didn't kill them, I don't mind if I didn't kill them, I mean, if I killed them. Man, I wouldn't trust my conscience and my feelings, even being innocent. And my eyeballs are needed to drive, so I better trust God with them. You don't operate a piece of machinery that has horsepower that can do all kinds of destruction to your own understanding. You better have God behind that steering wheel while you sit in the passenger seat. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. The way of God is a straight path. And people act like it's, it's, it's curvy and it's, and it's not. We just fall for the sin billboard. And I'm not talking about the billboards on the side of the highway. I'm talking about those things that Satan knows that entraps you and he'll put up those paths. And yeah, and he take a I I went to driving school before I drove before I was 16 years old. And I remember the illustration the the instructor told me he says where your eyes go, the steering wheel will go. Now me, I'm opposite. My my, if I look to the left, the car goes right for some stupid reason. I don't know why. I do it opposite. That means you're out of control. If you were to blindfold yourself and begin walking, you will find yourself, and it's been, it's been scientifically proven, you will walk in a circle. If not, just, and you undo the Bible. Why am I not where I'm supposed to be? You know, up in New England, when they farm, well, probably anywhere where they farm, when they used to do animals, the plow. That farmer will get on that, 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 that plow with his yoke of oxen, and he will focus his eyes something straight ahead. And he'll keep his eyes, if it's a tree, if it's a tower, if it's grandma, whatever it is. Why don't you don't move? And he'll straight forward that way to that mark. Now, when you go to Sturbert Village in Massachusetts and you're able to watch them do that, it's funny when you watch the teenage, the kids doing that. Their roles are like, mm -hmm, because they're not, they don't pick a focal point. They're looking all, hey, look at that, there's a rabbit. 
Oh look, there goes a chicken, and and you look at the rolls. A man that has his has his eyes focused on something, he has a nice straight roll. But him that's looking all over the place, his rolls are, and you can see it. But the problem with that is today, when we look back at that roll, we can't see it. Matter of fact, some are enough full to say, "Hey, I'm doing a good job." Wait to get to the judgment seat of Christ. And you'll find out how straight your robe was really if it's not under the blood. When you take your eyes off Jesus, Titus 2.13, you're going to go left or right. And you will give an account for going right or left, whatever that was. And Satan knows what your life is and what your sins are to, to make you go right or left. My right and left is not your right and left. And your right and left is not someone else's right or left. Remove thy foot from evil. Get it back on the path where it belongs. And stay on the path. what it's about.